What's up guys? It's Will with Basic Gear Review and I'm here with John Munyer. We're checking out his uh, seven string Warwick thumb bass. That's all I know of it. So I'm gonna let him take it from That's here. That's correct, man. That's all you need to know, man. No, it's, uh, it's my custom seven string Warwick thumb bass. Um, I had it made um, early this year, about June-ish is when I got it. Um, I got to pick the wood out whenever I was here for um, the base camp reunion last year. So it's a whole different cool experience whenever you actually get to go into that magical woodshed that they have out there where they have like woods you know that have been out there aging for you know upwards of anywhere between eight to like 30 years yeah something like crazy some of the coolest like exotic woods that you can find um i gotta pick out my own wood i know that sounds there you so go. <laughs> Ooh, yeah anyway um but yeah so um it's all swirly babinga um i'm gonna get um bartolini's put in for the uh, for the pickups, um, as soon as they get done getting made, they're being ordered at the moment, because um, you know nobody just has you know seven string soap bar pickups yeah, right. just kind of laying around. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but you know <laughs> I know it's um, high demand. Yeah, why would you exactly. not have that? <laughs> why, why didn't everybody play them? You know. But anyway, so and then um, the other cool feature too is that they um, have matching um, headstock tuners, um, and I love the way they did them also because they kind of partition the the grains, you know, just yeah. kind of match, you know, how it is in that. <laughs> fretboard Gorgeous. and everything else. Um, the other cool feature about this bass too is on the back, if you notice, a lot of their um, custom shop stuff comes standard with um, USB rechargeable um, preamps now. Mm -hmm. So like, you don't have to keep changing nine volt batteries. Yeah, you just yeah. take a micro USB and just keep it charged. That's and awesome. then the panel on the back also is, is the matching wood. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, I've got my custom inlay that I, that I had made also. This is a, a hawk, you know, going after a rabbit because I, hunt with hawks like mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier yeah, and stuff awesome. too and um so that's the inspiration for that but um yeah man so that's that's kind of the rundown it's of this crazy space, it's beautiful so what um what kind of voicing you're going for in your pickups do you have any any idea you know as far as voice i'm I, i'm i'm not i don't know if i'm that you know gearhead and uh -huh. nerdy yeah. you know the voicing whatnot like um i just know that i like um I like the Bartolini's because they're extremely good at capturing that Warwick trademark oh, growl yeah. mm -hmm. sound, you know? Um, the stock MECs are good also. It's just, I'm a Bartolini guy. Yeah. You know, you guys do gear stuff all the time. It so happens. You find, you find what you, you like. You find what you like. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. So to each his own. Mm -hmm. you know, so but. what's the, uh, the preamp section? How are these, these knobs laid out? Okay. So basically, um, you know, the, the thumbs are different than a lot of models mm -hmm. and, um, Basically, you've got, you know, a push-pull um, bypass oh, wow. knob for the volume. Okay. And then you've got the blend between pickups. So it's, you know, you got a stackable pot here. Mm -hmm. Then you've got mids, and then another stackable pot with bass and treble. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. You want to play a little bit for us? Show us. Oh, God. Show us what this thing can do. Well, here's, <laughs> here's, here's the low F sharp. Yeah. Sweet, and that's it. Thanks for yeah, thanks yeah, for joining yeah, us. Yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, um, no, it's cool, man. I mean, just basically like, you know. <laughs> you know, whatever. It's beautiful. Um, it's years of training. Yeah, right yeah, there. I know. Incredible. There's tons of training. Incredible. No, we totally um, we we practiced what for weeks on this. Like we've yeah. been emailing back and oh, forth. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. It's been it's this. been close to maybe a year. Yeah, whatever. I, we we really just spontaneously yeah, just came is, up with this, whatever. We found a um, slot and took it. <laughs> we found a slot, yeah, <laughs> a, a, a slot and took it. Um, but yeah, no, um, I'm not one of those dudes that's normally like one of those like whatever mm -hmm. kind of dudes. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, basically like, um, you know, everything, I, I have everything basically flat at the moment. I don't know if you guys can kind of translate. Everybody wants to always hear what an F sharp sounds like mm -hmm. all the way through. So basically you've got. Yeah, <laughs> that's anyway, crazy. so that's that's kind of the layout of that. F sharp to C um, tuning, correct? F sharp to C, okay. correct. So, um, but I'm not gonna bore anybody with, with doing, uh, you know, lots of doodly doodly boodly <laughs> wanky stuff, you know, or whatever, but. Um, I mainly just wanted everybody to kind of check it out because I know you guys dug it and everything. Oh else yeah, and, absolutely. So um, you were saying that you have projects where you have 
you have two of these, mm -hmm. and they're both in separate tunings. So what kind of what yeah. kind of music are you doing? What kind of tunings are you using? That kind of stuff. I, I'm in a couple of um, like one's kind of like more of a prog metal band, another mm -hmm. one's like um, you know a heavy band, um, but it's got a lot of um, you know prearranged. Um, programmed kind of like um, symphonic orchestral you okay. know, instrumental accompaniment type stuff mm -hmm. with it um, but the, that project actually um, I actually tune EA EA DGC and um, it gives a, a little extra you know low end as far as um, you know going back and forth between almost like it's almost kind of like a double drop tuning mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah yeah um, and then I don't even know how to describe some of the new tunings. My other project is coming out like the the, the we 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 were playing the standard before the last EP we did with uh -huh. my other band, um, which is called On the Shoulders of Giants, and uh, that band is a couple of buddies of mine, and then also um, Matt from Mudvayne, you know, okay, the drummer yeah, yeah. from and um, that project, the first EP we released was all standard, mm -hmm. but. Um, I don't even know how to describe some of the tunings that my guitar player is coming up with now. Okay, but he so he like, just tinkers he, and yeah, then finds things. Yeah, he tinkers things. and he um, does a lot of weird, like, harmonic dissonance sounding oh, I love that crap. kind of stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll send you some stuff. Yeah, please do. But, um, but anyway, so um, I'm still kind of trying to figure out how best to go back and forth between projects, but mm -hmm. that's the reason why, mainly why I play Seven, is yeah, because, yeah. you know, Whenever you're in two different projects with two different, like extended range eight string players, mm -hmm. um, you can either, you know, get a five or six string extended range bass yeah. that is going to cost you extra mm -hmm. anyway, or in Warwick's case, you can get a, you know, standard thirty four inch seven string and mm -hmm. it's about the same price. Yeah. So, so at that yeah. point, why wouldn't you? Yeah, do exactly. That? I have an extra string. You don't always have to play it every strong <laughs> yeah. or every every song. I mean, uh, it. Despite what some people might might say. Yeah. So know, bringing so. that up. Yeah. Compared to like a four or a five string instrument, you mm -hmm. know, like which are the most average ones you'll see. Mm -hmm. Why would you choose this over that? Because a lot of people do hate on extended range things and stuff of that nature. So. It, it obviously is making your projects easier to do with something like this, you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas people say, oh, Jocko didn't use anything more yeah. than four, all that. Well, Jocko also wasn't in your project, you know mm. what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah. so it's it's cool to see people embrace this because I've yeah. always loved, I have a six string rock bass streamer model, I believe at home. Nice. And it's, it's super fatiguing to play <laughs> like so far, but I love it, it's awesome. It really just boils down to, after a while, what begins to feel normal mm -hmm. and everything feels weird that you're not used to whenever you first start playing yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And the more you start playing it, the more normal it feels to the point where now when I pick up a four or five string, that feels weird as hell. It's like a toy. Yeah. Like, what is it? It's just like... It's spaghetti for you know, a neck? I, I can like wrap... Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> whatever. I feel like I stumble almost over a, a four or five string more so than I do yeah, like yeah. seven anymore. It's so. understandable. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess... Like we were talking about a while ago, at one point a four string was an extended range mm -hmm. bass. Also, mm -hmm. you know, I, <laughs> I, I I can only imagine you know some of these older like composers and stuff. Yeah. You know, I wonder if Bach would sit around and just be like, well, you know, so and so didn't need a, you know, friggin' I I really can't imagine billion string harpsichord or whatever. <laughs> yeah. just stupid, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't can't know. imagine you but, know people of that caliber tend to appreciate these kinds of things more often, you know, because mm -hmm. you can do more with it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I just don't understand. People, a lot of people are set in their ways. It's the same thing yeah. where people have, like, people are obsessed with chasing that old, like, classic 59 tone, like on a Les Paul, you know what I mean? Sure. And then I know people, like our producer in Basic Gear Review, he, like, yearns to go futuristic with it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, move forward instead of moving backwards and staying with these PAFs and staying, you know? And not to say those aren't great, they are, but for us to move forward as a community you know what mm -hmm. i mean there have to be people who are willing to do things like this and yeah. so and, i think it's awesome and of course there's there's always going to be those people who have nothing else better to do than to bitch absolutely <laughs> that's what makes it fun yeah, that's where the fun sure. comes in yeah you got to have you got to have you know the the yin to every yang you know mm -hmm. so, absolutely so yeah. what made you choose uh, fretless over fretted um, I wanted to have one fretted and one fretless just because mm -hmm. there's certain songs that i've written with my bands that i've thought you know this would just sound so much better 
you know, on a, on a fretless. Yeah, yeah. And, um, fretlesses have, you can be much more expressive with fretlesses, exactly. for sure. Exactly. You know, there, it just has a different tone when you slide, mm -hmm. you know, when you go between notes and everything else. I just wanted to be able to say, I just, I really want to do that song with the fretless mm -hmm. and be like, okay, here's my fretless. Yeah, you know, exactly. I, I just want one of each. And um, basically, uh, it's just about diversity, mm -hmm. you know, options and everything. Yeah. So I really like that you're using round wounds on it too, because a lot of people with fretlesses swear by flats. They're like, oh, you're going to ruin the fretboard, this and that. But I mm -hmm. mean, if you have well, your instrument set up properly, and if you play properly, <laughs> if you if you look close, you can definitely already start to see a little, little bit scuffs. of uh, little, yeah. But that's what you know, a little bit of TLC and, yeah, and sandpaper and some wax will you know go there you a go. long way. Exactly. So, take care of your shit. You yeah, know, so. that's all it takes. That's yeah. all it takes. For sure. Well, it's an absolutely gorgeous instrument. Yeah. Do you want to play Thank a little you. bit so people can kind of hear? Yeah, I know you don't want to, but would you? <laughs> would I? <laughs> I don't even know what I play. That's how I feel too. Trust me. Yeah. I, I, people dragging me in here saying, "Let's do this video." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is this we're we're getting ready to get into an opera part here in a moment. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I really don't I don't, what do you want me to play? What do you think I should play? If you want to play, I don't know, something similar to what your projects are doing or just I know you say you don't want to noodle, but Yeah, I mean just um <laughs> fretless because because like, we were talking about it earlier and it takes way more you know cognizance of your muscle memory and how you're fretting so how long have you been doing it how long has it taken you to kind of get comfortable let's see I got it in maybe I didn't get it in June I got it in like I think of it I think I got it around August okay so I've only been playing it a few months mm -hmm. you know I just that's been the hardest part man it's just you know the dots aren't always where you know, just it, it having to be exactly where those dots are. Yeah. You know? And if you're just a little bit higher, then you're a little sharper. Yeah. Just a little bit lower, it all it takes is a tiny flat. bit. Yeah. So, so with the inlays, this is a question I didn't really think about until right now. Mm -hmm. The the what are they called? The dots. <laughs> is that exactly where your finger should go, or is that placed where it would be on a normal one? Well, and you know, really, honestly, like. That's, that's been the hardest part for me is at times I feel like, you know, especially if, I, if I'm just even a little bit out of tune, mm -hmm. it, it's sometimes it feels like it's actually right before the dot or, yeah. you know, like right on it, whatever. I mean, I don't have the fret markers at the top, mm -hmm. you know, to show me exactly kind of where yeah, yeah. it should be. So um, I try my best to just, you know, use my ear. Mm -hmm. if, um, if it just doesn't sound right, then I know, you know, hey, dumbass, you're just a little bit, you know. <laughs> Oh, you're a little off. You know, mm -hmm. So I try and stay. I try and stay as close to the dot as possible. Okay, and cool. It, yeah, so, just because so far it's been it's been pretty accurate. Okay, cool. Because I have a um, it's simple. It's like a Squire Base of Doom type mm -hmm. of copy, like the Jocko one. Right. And it's got lines, but the dots are in between the lines as it would be on a fretted one. Mm -hmm. But you're supposed to play closer to the line than the dot. So exactly. that's why I asked. You know yeah. what I mean? Just to see, do you play? Right. And we um, were talking earlier, like you, with with a fretted, you can almost go right up. To the end of a fret, or yeah. right at the beginning of a fret, and you still got you the got same. a good amount of yeah, buffer yeah. zone. There's a lot of buffer zone. Yeah, which not you so do not have new, here. None, yeah. zero. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 kind of nice to suck at something new. That, that, That's that, true. That's I, true. I always I always enjoy sucking at new things because, you know, I may feel bad for a while, but then you get better yeah, over absolutely. time, and then you know you find something else new to suck at, and mm -hmm. then you get better. So yeah, you get you get too comfortable, <laughs> and you never grow. So exactly. So yeah, it's really exactly. important. So. Anyway, man, I don't know. Anything cool. else you want to cover? Yeah, well, thank you very much. I yeah. appreciate you talking to us about yeah, this man. beautiful, beautiful instrument. No, I'm glad we stumbled onto each other out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. All right, well, I'm Will with Basic Gear Review. We got John here. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah.